Hey, what's up guys? It's Chad with Living the Van Life up here in Washington. And today, we're gonna talk about recovery equipment. Now you might be asking, well, what the hell is recovery equipment and what the heck does that have to do with anything about van life? Well, if you guys have been watching this channel uh, long enough, then you realize that I like to incorporate a lot of backcountry and off-road exploration into my van life, and that's what I showcase here on the channel. Now, recovery equipment for me goes back to the Vanigan days when we decided to build out a couple Vanigans that were a little bit more built for going and traveling off-road. We realized that the more you travel off-road, the further you get yourself into the backcountry, the greater you are at risk of getting stuck and needing to get yourself unstuck. Now, back in the Vanigan days, there was always two or three of us running around together, and there was always another vehicle to where if we got stuck, we could help get each other unstuck. Now with that, you're always gonna need some sort of recovery rope. We did some extensive research on the internet and quickly found that Masterpool uh, was apparently the one to get. So we signed up to get their kinetic recovery rope and I've carried that on all of my vans and all of my ventures everywhere we go. Now, the thing is, here in the Sprinter van, with my four-wheel drive, I'm doing more solo trips, which means I don't have another vehicle, I don't have another person to help recover me if I get this big old giant thing stuck. Now that's where recovery gear gets even more important. In fact, as you guys know, here on the front of the van, I've got a Warren Xeon 12S, it's a 12,000 pound winch here on the front of the van, so that will help me get unstuck if I'm out by myself. Now, what's important is to have all the right gear on board for as many different scenarios that you might find yourself in when you're out in the backcountry. Now, these first few scenarios of getting out and actually using the winch on the van, on the trail, taught me a lot about what it meant to be properly prepared with a recovery kit and I definitely was far from properly prepared. So the kind folks over at Masterpool decided to step up to the plate and help support the Living the Van Life YouTube channel and get me set up with one of their thoroughly outfitted kits. So from here we're going to head on over to the Masterpool shop and they're going to get this van all set up and ready to go for the trail. Let's do this. All right guys, so here we are. We are in the Masterpool shop. This is where all the magic happens for Masterpool. And this is Victor. Victor, tell us a little bit about yourself and Masterpool. Howdy guys, like Chad said, my name is Victor. I was basically born in the Masterpool as my dad started the company uh, back in 96. We've been a vehicle recovery equipment company since the start. My dad used to be a commercial fisherman. He pretty much found you know, a need for better recovery gear with his off-road vehicle, basically took his knowledge of ropes and rigging that he learned, you know, as his whole life working in the marine industry, yeah. and applied it to a different market. So our first product was our Super Yanker tow rope. And from there, we, you know, we developed synthetic winch lines. You know, there wasn't anything new, but nobody was using it in the off-road market. And since then, we've just been developing lightweight, high-tech recovery gear for the off-road industry, for industrial applications. We do also a lot of special forces and military applications as well. So vehicle recovery kits and stuff like that for all their vehicles. So, so this is all totally your guys' jam then. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, yeah, vehicle recovery gear is, is what we do and that's it, so. Yeah, well, and I think that's an interesting thing, the fact that your dad with all his experience in the commercial fishing industry, I mean, that's like reliant on rope and yanking big equipment and the fact that you guys are able to take that experience and apply that to vehicle recovery I, yeah i think that's that's a cool part about it and it all started with the kinetic recovery rope yep back in 96. yeah yeah so it all just started with the tow rope you know my dad was just sick of breaking straps and stuff like that with it he had a you know pretty large suburban back in the day and yeah. getting that thing stuck in the snow wasn't easy to get out yeah so you know he kind of just took ropes he used on the boats and 
and made a product out of it and was splicing them in his garage while my mom sewed the bags, you know. Yeah. And I was going to trade shows with him around when I was eight years old. And Man, that's cool. So, uh, yeah. That, that's grassroots right there. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like I mentioned earlier before, when we were setting up the two-wheel drive Vanigans for recovery equipment, we did some extensive research and was finding that master pole was the, the recovery rope to have. And so, of course, we set it up. Come to find out years later, these guys are a family owned business here in my hometown and that's why we're here today. And I'm excited to get better equipped with some recovery equipment because like I said, as I continue to get out on solo adventures with this big old thing, if I get myself stuck, I, I'm gonna need the right equipment to get myself unstuck. And that's why we're here today. Victor and Masterpool is gonna get me set up with some equipment and uh, show us some of the kit and what's important to have when you're out doing this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Let's, Let's get into it. it. All right. Here we are. This is the kit that these guys at Masterpool have put together to be able to outfit the Sprinter van. And here with Victor, he's going to walk us through each individual item, talk about some of the stuff that the, the technology and the efforts that you guys have put into each individual item and how they're going to be beneficial to me and even you guys out on the trail. Yeah, what do you want to start with? I guess we can just start off with some of the winch accessories. You know, as you've mentioned in a bunch of videos, you've got a winch and uh, you're not afraid to use it. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, you know, having some good accessories, you know, to supplement that winch is, is really key. One thing that you had mentioned was, you know, you're out in the desert a lot and winch points are few and far between. Yep. So having that extra reach with your winch line is, is pretty important. So we've included a, a winch extension here. This is just our classic winch extension, pretty basic Dyneema rope, really well protected eyes and it's really lightweight and packed small, which was another key factor with your recovery gear is you're, yep. you know, you're trying to cut down on space and, and make sure that everything is nice and compact. A hundred percent because in van life, you know, it's all about minimalizing your stuff and maximizing yeah. your space because let's face it, living in this thing full time. So it's not like we're just going out for the weekend in a Jeep yeah. and we can load it full of recovery gear. So in the van, uh, we wanted to put together stuff that was relevant, yep. compact and, and maximize the use out of each individual item. Yeah. And so going off that, uh, another item we included, uh, this is called our MacGyver rigging line, and this can actually be used for uh, multiple applications. It can be used as another winch extension if you need some extra length. Okay. It's a 20 foot length strap. So, you know, if you're out in the desert and need to attach to a, a rock or something, you could wrap this line around a rock. It's a lot longer than your typical tree saver. Yeah. And it can be used in a pinch as a tree saver as well. You can double that line up yep. and use it as a 10 foot line on a tree. So again, the lengths between these two are? Oh, this is a 50 foot extension here. Okay. That's kind of our, our more common size is like 25 feet and 50 feet. It's okay. pretty common. Yep. And then this guy here is 20, um, 20. on that okay. rigging line. So. And so mainly the difference between this is this is you want to use as an extension. Yeah. This is kind of a multi-use yeah. everything. Hence yeah, the MacGyver. exactly. It's okay. kind of just, you know, whatever situation you can use it, like I said, as an extension, you know, as a, as a, tree saver or a rock strap to a, as an attachment point. Yep. You can use it as a bridle on the front of your vehicle as well if you need to attach to two, two points on the vehicle. Yep. So another item included is a snatch block. And the purpose of this is to decrease the force uh, required by your winch to pull this vehicle out. Uh, it is a pretty heavy vehicle and you have a 12,000 pound winch on there. And in most scenarios, that'll be just fine. But yep. if, you're, if you're pretty stuck, um, it's good to use a snatch block. You attach this onto your, you know, tree or rock recovery point, and uh, you know that doubles the breaking strength of the rope that you're using, and it also uh, will just lessen the force required by your winch to pull you out. And I think the other thing that I found with a snatch block too, and in some of the situations where I've come up with, 
Uh, perhaps at one point there was a giant rock in the road. Uh, if you just hook your winch up directly, all you're doing is pulling the rock towards you. So with a snatch block, I was actually able to go to a tree off the trail and use it to redirect. Yep. Yeah. And so it's like if your winch yeah. line was coming out of, you know, out of the winch there, you could, you know, pull something from that way over yep. as, as a redirect, definitely. So I'm definitely stoked to have the snatch block on board because there's multiple different uses for that. And there again, just maximizing what I can tackle out there by myself. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. There's a bunch of different scenarios that they can come in really handy. Yep. And, uh, you know, even using multiple snatch blocks can give you even more mechanical advantage if oh, you need. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, and, and different types of redirects as well. Yep. But yeah, and to attach all these lines together, we've got a couple of our new soft shackles here. Soft shackles aren't anything new. They've been pretty pretty prevalent in the last, I'd say five to eight years. But yep. you know, they're super lightweight, great option for winching. You know, if you need to attach the extension to your winch line, this is the best option to use because you're not using a heavy shackle in the middle of the line. Yep. That way, if something were to break, you know, this is a lot better flying the air than this. Sure. Uh, so just to reiterate, for those that aren't familiar, typically this was kind of the original style of hooking up lines, whether you've got a shackle point on your bumper somewhere or on your, your hitch receiver. Uh, you could use this to hook up your recovery ropes, etc. Now they've come out with these soft shackles, which like Victor said, you don't have this hunk of metal flying through the air if something were to fail. And let's face it, these are just so much lighter and easier, quicker yeah, to, to use. Float. Yeah. So one thing that's a little bit different about our soft shackles is that we have a locking tab here that slides back to open it. That gives a wide opening for this shackle to go over the knot. It makes it a lot easier to use when you're wearing gloves, you know, when you're in the snow and sand and, and a bunch of stuff is getting caught on the shackle. And then you run that through your rigging. To attach this to another rope, just gonna slide the shackle through another eye, you put that over the knot, and you slide that locking tab over. Our shackle is meant to be used in this manner here where the loop that goes over the knot is in a straight line and that'll secure the shackle. The shackle's not gonna come loose off this knot. We don't recommend pulling on the shackle in any other sort of way like this as that's putting extra pressure here on the knot. But there are a lot of scenarios where you do wanna use a steel shackle as well. Okay. Um, you don't always wanna use a soft shackle, so we've included a couple of those in there. Awesome. For example, our, our snatch block, it's better to use a steel shackle with it. Okay, oh, Just, so that's why you got the longer yeah. long opening there for um, the shackle. Yeah. And then there's other scenarios as well, just anything that has a sharp edge or if you're attaching to a, you know, someone's bumper or something. A lot of sure. a lot of the attachment points on those bumpers have sharp edges, which will damage uh, soft shackles. Yep. So it's better to use a steel shackle in that case. Yeah. We always recommend carrying both. Yeah. So then that's always my thing is like the more items you've got to be prepared for any possible scenario, yeah. the better. Exactly. So the next item we have here is a uh, kinetic recovery rope. All the other ones we covered already were kind of more for winching scenarios, but yep. If you find yourself stuck in snow or sand and there's another vehicle around that can uh, help pull you out, this is a really valuable tool. Um, it's quick to set up and it's, it's really effective. Yeah. Uh, it stretches versus a, you know, a static toe strap or something like that. So it absorbs a lot of that shock and allows the pulling vehicle to gain some momentum before it's actually pulling the stuck vehicle. So if you're not getting two vehicles stuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's that classic example where you're stuck on the side of the road and a pickup truck uh, comes by and he's got a chain in the back. The last thing you want to do is hook that chain up and start yanking on it to pull another vehicle out. And that's why these ropes really come into play because they're designed to for that other vehicle to get the momentum it needs to, to yank you up out of there, but be easier on your vehicle. Absorbs all so, the shock. Yeah. So you're not feeling any sudden jolt or yeah. It's not putting stress on the recovery points like a, you know, like a sudden shock would from a static rope. So. Yeah. Well worth the investment. Like I said, this is where it started for me and master pole. Even before I knew these guys were like yeah, right this, down the this road. This was our so. first product. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is where it started for you guys back in 96. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Cool. And so, yeah, the final thing we'll be doing is uh, we noticed the winch line that he's got on here is starting to show a little bit of signs of wear. So we're going to be replacing that with our Superline XD winch line this is kind of our top of the line winch line it has a braided cover over the entire rope protecting it from abrasion and sand and, and grit and all that i've got a sample piece 
of that line here. And if you slide the cover back, you can see the core of the rope is essentially the same as your typical winch line, but it has this braided cover over the entire line that just protects it from abrasion and you know damage from grit and sand getting caught in the fibers. This is actually a new version we just came out with that has a reflective tracer going along the entire line to give it some more visibility at night and even during the day. We've gone with a full synthetic rigging setup, meaning that we don't have any steel thimbles or anything in the eyes of this, and that just makes it more lightweight and more safe, especially when used with soft shackles, because when you start attaching your rigging with a soft shackle, you don't have any steel components in the middle of that rigging setup. Really lightweight, it does have a little ABS plastic piece on there that allows you to, to bring that line and store it flush up against the fair lead when it's not in use. Yep. But when you That's... go to winch, you just slide that back and attach, attach your soft shackle or your steel shackle just directly into that. Very cool. The thing I like about that is normally, right now I've got uh, a big hook on there and you can only pull the, the winch line in so far and then you've got the, the hook hanging off of there. Um, but with this, it pulls up nice and flush to the end of the fairly, like Victor was just saying, and that's essentially how your winch line stored on there. So very nice, clean uh, setup there. I like the idea of being able to just use soft shackles on that rather than the big hook. This allows you to kind of just skip any other items on here. You can just attach directly to the line and it's yeah. got a really durable chafe material in the eye as well to protect okay. it. It's made of the same fiber as the rope Dyneema. So it's, okay. it's really abrasion resistant and, and protects that eye really well. Okay. Now I think one thing as I researched putting a winch onto my van is you really have two options. You've got the wired option yeah which wire. i feel like is really kind of going back in time yeah uh, but it sounds like it's still an option on winches these days mm -hmm. um, or you can go with synthetic now of course each one has plus and minus and just the few times that i've used my winch realizing that oftentimes you're going up and over a rock maybe you're stuck down a hill and you've got a winch over some abrasive items like rocks or even yeah. logs and with a Synthetic line, that's something that you have to be concerned about because that rock can tear easily into that. And that's where the steel braided lines can be a bit of a plus, but honestly, the downsides of a, of a, a steel cable yeah. is something that I just didn't want to deal with. The they're harder to use, yeah. um, you know, they're heavier, you can get wire splinters that can cut your hand. Yeah. You know, in, in the event that they were to break, they're a lot more dangerous. You know, wire weighs a lot more and, and stores energy, so it's gonna yeah. go flying. Um, so, and, and the great thing about what you guys have included into this particular synthetic line is that you have all the benefits of a synthetic line, but yep. you've put extra added protection to help with that abrasion that yeah. typical synthetic lines are a little susceptible to. Exactly. So that's one thing I'm excited about because even just the few times that I use mine, I, I notice that abrasion already starting to happen. So yeah. it basically just protects that inner core from you know UV damage, rubbing against itself on the winch, any sort of sand and grit, you know, when you're dragging this winch line through the sand to go hook up to a recovery point. Normal synthetic rope will pick all that up and as you winch and pull on the line, it starts to wear down on the fibers of the rope. This yeah. prevents all that grit and sand and dirt from getting into those fibers. So the, the line will just last a lot longer. Very cool. We do yeah. include the rock guard with these as well. Okay. Um, as Chad mentioned, you know, sometimes you're in a scenario where you just really can't avoid the rope contacting something else. Usually you wanna try and, you know, rig up the line so it's not touching anything, but yeah. sometimes it just doesn't work that way. So yeah. you just gotta do what you have to do. But we include, uh, you know, just a Velcro rock guard to slide on the line okay. if it does have to come into contact with something, just to give so it some that, extra protection. that was something, if it's coming over rock, you just wrap that You could just wrap that around the rope and just kind of get it taut and get that set up in that section. Yeah. So that way the rope is has a little bit of extra protection on that, Perfect. that section. Okay. So. Excellent. And so even today, uh, a little bit later on in this video, we're going to install this yep. here on the Sprinter van. And these guys are going to walk us through some of the techniques of how to properly install a winch line because you don't just wrap this thing on and go. And so what else do we got here? Finally, we have our gear bag. So this is just a bag you use to store all your gear in. Really nice heavy duty vinyl bag. It's pretty oh, nice. water resistant, got pockets on the inside and it's just a roll top closure. Cool. So you can just, you know, Stuff it as much gear as you want and the bag will adjust for that.
It can also be used as a winch dampener. So, you know, if you want to clip this on the middle of your winch line when you're doing a recovery or something for a little bit extra safety in case something were to were to break, that sure. is going to prevent the line from flying as much. Okay. So, you know, speaking from the little bit of experience that I've got here in the Sprinter van in the last year, is that oftentimes you know your recovery gear stored in the back you've got to grab all these components and truck out to where you're going to set up your recovery. Yep. So having this bag and having everything in this, so you grab the bag and you're out into the field where you're going to do your recovery. Ready to um, go. This is going to be pretty handy. I feel like for sure. There again, being living in a van, being in a small space, being yeah. as organized as possible, uh, that's going to come in handy. So then we also have a fair lead up here. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your guys fairly yeah so we'll be installing that with the uh synthetic winch line this is just kind of your standard aluminum hose fair lead we make ours with a slightly larger opening in the center just to accommodate that superline xd has kind of a thicker splice than most winch lines because okay. it has all that you know heavy duty cover over it and it makes it a little bit thicker so that allows you to suck the line up flush on the fair lead and, and not have it get stuck in there, okay so. yep fantastic cool all right well i guess from here what do you think should we get into yeah. Doing an installation. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, from here, we're going to install this new winch line here on the Warren Xeon 12S winch that I've got here on the front of the Sprinter van. Let's do it. Cool. So before we install this new winch line, the first step is to remove the old one. So the Warren Xeon has a slot in the drum that the rope goes through and there's a little metal puck in here. So what we're going to do is take a screwdriver and try and uh, pull this puck out there. It can just be kind of a pain in the butt to get out. It's this guy. So that's a puck that we're trying to take out. Out with the old. The next step is we're gonna remove this old fair lead. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong with this one, but the reason we're swapping it out is that our Superline XD has a pretty large splice area because of all the chafe guard and the overbraid on the line. The issue with that, the height isn't tall enough for the line to go through. And on our fair lead, we have a taller opening in the center and that allows the rope to pass through the fair lead easily so that when you pull that winch puck up, it'll sit there flush. All right, <clears throat> so the next thing I want to touch on, the actual opening here on your bumper or on your fair lead mount. You want to make sure that when the fair lead is mounted on there, that the rope isn't going to be contacting the sharp steel edges here on the, on the bumper opening itself. So you can kind of put your finger back there and make sure that the rope's not going to be touching that sharp edge while you're winching. So the end of the Superline XD has this orange section, which is a high heat fiber that's actually braided over this initial protective covering. That just gives it some protection against any heat that the winch might generate. And it also lets you know when you're on the last 14 feet of your winch line. The drum attachment on the end of the line is compatible with just about any winch. Uh, we include a hardware kit, so you can attach that regardless of the style. In the case of this Warren Xeon, we include a little aluminum puck that you're gonna slide the end of the line through the hole in the drum. You'll insert this puck and then you slide it back and that'll lock it into place on the drum. In most cases for winches, you want the line to come from the bottom and roll up over. So I've lined up that hole in the drum with the bottom so that I could just run it through the fair lead and directly into that hole. Now what we're gonna do is pull the winch over and you can see it popping out here. We're gonna take this little aluminum puck that is gonna go in this little loop. Go ahead and pull that tight, suck that up in there. So we've got the new fair lead installed. We've attached the end of the line onto the drum. So now what we're gonna do is tuck this line up here and go outside and pre-tension the line.
All right, so we pulled the van outside. The first step we want to do is is just uncoil this line. That way, while we're spooling it in, we're not going to have any any sort of tangles or anything. The Superline XD is particularly a little bit more stiff than your normal winch line when it's new because of the overbraid, but over time it'll loosen up. So now that we got this spooled out, we're gonna get the very first wrap on the drum here, just kind of coiled up nice, and then we'll start tensioning it after that. So to tension the line, we're gonna hook the end of it up to this Colorado here and we're gonna winch the Colorado towards the Sprinter van and that'll put the line under tension and uh, get it on the windsor nice and tight. So one thing about this winch puck setup is we have a pull strap here that you can hold on to. That way you don't get your hands caught in the winch. Just give it a couple bumps at the end. So there we have it. We have successfully installed the Superline XD winch line here from master pull we've got that all installed on the van and i gotta say guys the further that i push myself the further that i push the van out into the back country i have realized how much recovery gear is important and having the right gear and there's only so much we can learn from just researching online so this has been an exceptional opportunity to come and meet with the experts themselves great having you here yeah man yeah. really appreciate it and just getting the insight on what kit's necessary, what kit works, and how you guys go about doing it. So yeah. yeah, there's a lot of information involved, you know, and definitely being able to see it in person and 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 get to feel products and kind of get a get a feeling of, of what what it is you're working with definitely yep. helps. Yep, absolutely. So now I'm headed down towards Moab, down into uh, Arizona, and then Baja. So hopefully looking to put this thing to work. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully you don't have to, but if you do, we're <laughs> hoping you have the gear that can get you out. So That's right. That's right. So, cool. We'll wrap it up with that. And um, thanks again, man. I really yeah. appreciate it. Looking Likewise. forward to uh, Cheers. what happens next with you guys. So For sure. Cool. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, you bet. Well, guys, that's it. The van is now outfitted with some of the most premium recovery gear that there is available on the market. That just helps give me more confidence in getting myself my van, my equipment, further out into the backcountry, knowing that if I get myself in any sort of sticky situation, I've got the proper tools and equipment to help get myself out and back to safety. It's super awesome working with the folks over at Masterpool and helping support a locally owned family business that is making a big difference out there in the overland and off-roading world by creating such good recovery equipment. And they were actually gracious enough to provide a discount code for you guys to get up to 10% off of your Masterpool purchases by using coupon code VANLIFE. So get on over, check out their website. Get yourself a bit of a discount if you're looking for some recovery gear. Hopefully you found this video informative and intriguing. I know getting over there and talking with Victor uh, helped me understand a lot more about the recovery equipment and how to use it. So hopefully you guys found value in that as well. Before we jump out of here, I want to remind you guys to head on over to livingthevanlife.com. Make sure and get your merch. As I say, don't be a fool. Be cool. Whether you're looking for an LTVL hat, a t-shirt, stickers, hoodies, we've got it over there at livingthevanlife.com. 
And if you're new to the channel and you've made it this far into the video, I'd like to invite you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you do hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the little bell next to the subscribe button because that's what's going to notify you anytime videos like this are uploaded. Also, don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section down below. From here, I'm getting out of here and I'm going to go find myself the next Living the Van Life adventure. Peace out. Keep on trucking.